What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ink Drink Think, episode 22. Johnny's giving us a cute little wave, but of course, <laughs> you know from the title, tonight we are drawing and talking tips, tricks, and advice for drawing comic book pages. Uh, tonight, we're actually going to be talking about the craft of making comic books, and luckily, you have four talented comic book creators and myself to talk to you tonight about <laughs> making comic books i was guys, like who are you leaving out <laughs> <laughs> i could have gone with anybody on that one <laughs> yeah was everybody else like it's me right it's me <laughs> he's about <laughs> to call me out <laughs> I don't know, a group of cartoonists everyone's an imposter <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but of course guys i'm your host michael pickard and as always i'm joined by my wonderfully talented co-hosts and friends johnny wise hey uh, yep, I'm Johnny. Um, so I wasn't sure whether what I was going to draw tonight. I have a few like interior page samples on the go, um, but I also had a commission I needed to get to that was like I'd done like in fits and starts. The guy I was really excited about it. The guy wanted like an old timey cartoon drawing of a mouse about to eat a piece of cheese. And then there's a cat, to, a cat about to eat the mouse, and then there's a dog about to eat the cat. Um, <laughs> so I was like, I, I'm like, like a little behind on that. I'll start doing that. But then, in the midst of our chat, I basically finished it. So I'll just <laughs> oh. do the finishing touches to that, and that's where we're at with that oh, so far. Man. Oh, that background is great. Oh. Thanks. That's um, perfect. Yeah, I was trying to find like a wallpaper online or something, and then I realized there's like a vintage group of like Procreate brushes. I was like, I bet there would be something in there. And the oh, first yeah. thing I looked at, I was like, that's the one. That is my one. <laughs> and then I think I might just, maybe I'll draw some interiors or maybe I'll just draw some ugly faces and stuff and just have fun. Because I haven't drawn for me in a little while. Maybe I'll just draw some stupid shit. Yeah, yeah Johnny, take a Unite. This is for you, man. Unite. Yeah, yeah. Draw whatever the hell you I'm want. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I am this drinking a Hop House. Hop House 13. <laughs> I think that's the name of it. Pretty good. It's nice. Toppy. Uh, but Johnny, it looks great so far, and I'm excited to see what you end up coming up with by the end of the episode for your your you time drawing. So, Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, guys, we're also joined by fellow co-host and friend Nate Wells. Nate, you're up, buddy. Hey guys, Nate Wells. Uh, tonight, I am going to be drawing a page from. Uh, the opening sequence of a project that me and Mike are working on together, actually. He's writing, I'm drawing. Super, super excited about it. Um, and this this intro to the book is, uh, is really fun because there's not really a lot of dialogue in it, a lot of visual storytelling, which is awesome. And so I really just get to, like, let the drawings speak for themselves, which is something that, you know, you don't really get to do that often in comics, just not worry about where the words are going to go. Um... <laughs> Which is is awesome, and and you know it's it's excellently written, and uh, oh stop! Yeah, the pages it. that I'm doing is yeah yeah. <laughs> it's just it's just the best thing I've ever read. No, um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, unabashedly, this is the one I'm most excited to see by the end of the night. I'm sorry, cool. everybody else who's working and hanging out tonight, <laughs> but this one I have some stake in. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Hopefully by the end of the episode, you're not like. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try and produce some other projects. Um, <laughs> Johnny, would you want to take a crack yeah. at this one? Or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Start it over. <laughs> what are you drinking tonight? Another uh, LaCroix? Yeah, I'm drinking a LaCroix. Another limoncello, limoncello naturally essenced LaCroix that's got no wow. calories, no sweeteners, no sodium, and that equals innocent, is what it says on the can. Uh, huh, but it's super boy. tasty, so... Nice man. Drinking drinking healthy. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I might I might break into the break into the more fun stuff uh if, as soon as I get a little bit more of this page drawn, but I wanted to you know, certainly not at least in front of the writer draw some pages under the influence. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very weird that you keep working on this project that we're doing but you're drunk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, boss is yeah, drunk when I, the stuff I sent you last night I was absolutely shit faced <laughs> but today I'm going to do it right to, to, wow. today starts a new day <laughs> today's a new day <laughs> well it's coming out great man and I, of course I'm, I'm giddy as a, a child on Christmas mm -hmm. because I'm so excited to see how it turns out but guys joining us as well 
You know him as Teacher Todd. It's Todd Blackwood. Todd, <laughs> what do you got going on tonight, buddy? Hey, guys. Uh, well, I've got some um, Batman pages that I penciled, and uh, I turned down my, my brightness on my machine, so you should be able to see this. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I've got, I don't know, four or five pages, I think. So basically, I'm. This is gonna take me a while. So I'm gonna. I'm making shapes, um, and it's layers wise is gonna be an interesting stretch. But I've also got some in, other interesting things going on. I've got this uh, warriors, um, oh, some man. warriors designs Ooh, yeah. that I'm doing. It's mm-hmm. fun. I I drew a warriors comic called Warriors Jailbreak, which I'm really proud of, and um, I would be. I've been wanting to do kind of some robert valley uh influence uh warriors designs so i'm they're kind of working and mm. but not easy to do they're likenesses of actors and that's always tough oh yeah and here's my uh my batman faces i did some turnarounds for batman i can't deny it i love to draw batman i like i like drawing a clint eastwood batman i like to imagine <laughs> that clint eastwood is under that that cow which i think is what frank miller was always going for well todd i'm psyched to see how it turns out throughout the course of the episode but guys of course he's practically the fifth beetle at this point he's been on so many times (laughs) friend of the show special guest host matt battaglia matt you're up buddy what do you got going on tonight what's up uh i'm working on pages for this anthology that's i think coming to kickstarter next month Uh, I finished the first page. Let me um, switch my camera. I figured out a new camera view. Boom. Um, So I finished the first page the other night. Um, I don't know how well you you can kind of see it through. I I did some lettering on a vellum. Oh, man. So it's it's a four-page anthology. Um, So I'm working on the second page. I got uh, scripts here and... I'm just doing the the lettering right now. Uh, what do you? How are you doing the lettering? Just with rapidographs. Oh, you're doing it by hand. Wow. Yeah, I, I I think it's fun, and I mean, for something like this, where it's like yeah. four pages, like I I'm not I I would not call myself a letterer or even like a great letterer, but I I just like I like see, having it on the like actual artwork. Well, Matt, I've seen the yeah. pencils for this page. Um, prior to recording and it's really exciting. And of course I told you off screen, but uh, your panel layout on this page in particular is amazing. And I really like mm. the short beat moments that uh, you have you. captured throughout this, this page. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk you all through how I, I guess I'll show you the script and everything. And we can, I'm excited to hear how everyone goes about like translating script to panels to, and then what, you know, what role everyone tries to take in that creative process. Right. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. And without further ado, we can get right to that. Um, I'll jump around myself real quick just to round out our five man band. But like I said, guys, I am Michael Pickard. Uh, tonight I'm going to be working on a page from my graphic novel, Ultramax, which was co created by writer Doug Wood, uh, who Matt has worked on uh, several projects with. But like I said before, guys, we're talking about tips, tricks, and general procedures when it comes to drawing comic book pages tonight. Um, Mm -hmm. So to start off the conversation, I'm going to flip around my camera. But guys, to start off our conversation, I want to ask you, what's one piece of advice you wish you would have known going into your first set of comic book pages? What advice would you give to somebody who's never attempted to draw sequentials who wants to? Mm. <laughs> get a day get a day job and wait for the internet to show up because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise <laughs> is a son of a bitch <laughs> yeah comics will break your heart kid <laughs> never well, blow a lead time yeah great advice absolutely I did not do that on my first book and I regret it to this day wow what was it it's called indoctrination, um, and I just I had lead time, and I just didn't I didn't um, I didn't schedule myself properly, and it just yeah. you know it meant that I was rushing through most of the book, and 
Mm-hmm. And it shows, I think. And so I, I still very much regret it. Um, but you know, you, you, you learn how to s- schedule better. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the biggest things for yeah. me is like, for, like finding a workflow that is efficient, you know, that also yields good pages. Um, cause, uh, you know, especially like, I mean, as, as stressful as deadlines can be, it is, it is helpful to have like a, you know, something there. It's like, well, I have to get this stuff done and I have to sort of like problem solve and find out uh, a method that, that works for me. Cause I mean, nobody's going to tell you like how to do it. Yeah. They just mm-hmm. want, they just want the stuff at the, you know, at the end of the project. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing is like, I spent like a long time when I like first graduated school and really started actually trying my hand at this thing where I was like, I don't even really know like what I'm supposed to be doing in a day. It's like, am I going to pencil and ink a page? Like, am I just going to do that one page today or am I going to pencil a few pages and then spend, you know, a day like inking a couple pages or whatever? Am I going to pencil one a day? How long do I need to be spending on layouts? Like, mm-hmm. mm, yeah. And to speak to that as well, one uh, a definite lesson that I would take from my first job in comics, which um, didn't really go anywhere, but it was a full comic <laughs> um, that I drew and inked, uh, would be I don't know how to word it best, but when you're penciling, like right from the early stages don't just leave something as shit and wait for it to be better in the next stage. <laughs> there were a lot of points, a lot of like panels and then yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. pages where I would be like, I don't like this at all, but um, I'm sure I'll make myself like it when I ink it. And it just, yeah. the next stage doesn't make it better if it's built <laughs> on shit. Yeah, don't don't uh, leave problems for uh, the next the next job that you have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do it well from the start. If you're not happy with it from the start, or it's not clear from the start, like if you've just laid out a page, you're like fuck it, I'll work it out. Yeah, don't just keep super, waiting till the next stage. I'm always super jealous of of folks that had inkers that quote unquote fixed their stuff, so to speak. You know, yeah, they like, got that perfect pairing, like Frank Miller and Jansen, where he was like, Jansen could fill in all the gaps and make Frank's, you know, bring out all the best stuff and make it look like a professional page, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, as heady as that might be for me to say, but I think we all probably know what I mean by that. <clears throat> yeah, if you're your own anchor you only have you to fix and uh yeah and it just ends up creating headaches for yourself later on yeah and it's not that inker's job to fix your stuff and i've i've had pairings with inkers where it's like instead of say fixing my stuff it's like it emphasizes all the stuff i should have gotten right in the pencils and didn't i guess yeah and i'm yeah. like oh i thought that looked good but now i don't like it you know yeah I remember the only part I didn't do of the first work that I like the first book that I I did was the coloring. And Hmm. I remember I only saw like, I only saw it like in a preview just way later when I kind of forgot about the whole thing. Cause as I was doing it, I was like, this is not going anywhere. Nothing is happening with this. Hmm. There's no audience. This was for like a publisher Hmm. that was just not, there was nothing really. Um, (laughs) I just remember looking back on it a little bit later and I saw like a preview of the colored version. And I was like, everything I was worried about to begin with, I was like, some of this, some of these pages are okay. Some of them are not very good. And I was like, I just hope for, for the sake of the ones that I'm kind of happy with, that the coloring is okay. And boy, it was not. <laughs> it was like a lot of it, it almost looked like they'd taken the ink layer and colored over it. Cause like they'd really blown out a lot of it or gone really dark and you just hmm. couldn't make out what was happening at all huh. it was um that's interesting it was bizarre yeah that's too bad yeah. but that is the best piece of advice though is is don't save your problems for later because either you're gonna screw it up or someone else is gonna take it and screw it up yeah yeah, yeah. And I found even now make it permanent i mean yeah. it helps working digitally because you can go back onto your pencils but even now I have the mindset of not doing that. Like once I'm inking, I'd rarely go back to do the, to work on the pencils again. But a lot of the time I've been like working on sample pages and I've started penciling something 
and kind of been like, this isn't really working, but I'm sure it will once I ink. Uh, yeah, I, I used to uh, pencil traditionally, like up until like a few months ago, pencil everything I did traditionally. And either if I was feeling just really, really gutsy, I would just go into the inks on that because um, sometimes I get really gung ho. But generally, I tried to scan and then print in blue lines so that I did have some kind of a safety net or even just like a record of what the pencils looked like. Yep. Um, but now I've gotten really into into digital penciling just because of uh, it just sort of streamlines that process because kind of like you just said, Matt, I am when I'm penciling really just wanting to get into the inks. Like yeah. the pencils are just me figuring out what I'm going to do on the part that I enjoy. <laughs> It's yeah, well, it's like that. it's like I just need want. It, it's one thing if you're handing it off to someone else, but like for me, it's like I'm just trying to communicate just enough to the inker me that I I know the the shapes and everything. Like I don't, I I, I kind of like um I like leaving some stuff. I like having the major stuff figured out, but then like leaving the shadow like some of the shadows and stuff like that and all the like textures like leave that to the ink like don't yeah like like uh you guys were talking about before i like to have all the problems solved in the penciling yeah so that i'm not yeah. still having to like okay now how am i gonna do this when i ink where i'm just trying to figure out how to make it look cool when i mm. ink like that's really where i want to be yeah now do you do like as far as like thumbnails are concerned like how do you what's everyone's process for thumbnails like and oh, oh, actually, even before that, what kind of scripts do you like? That's really the, like, if you're writing for yourself or if you're getting a script from somebody, like, what format are you most comfortable with? So when you, when you well, ask about script, like, are, are you talking about, like, the, the depth of the detail or? Um... Well, like, do you like getting, like, I don't usually like when the writer breaks it up into panels. Oh, um, yeah. That that usually drives me nuts. Um, if they I can kind of do it, it's that. great. But they yeah yeah. I, always... there's sometimes it doesn't work. Um, yeah, I've, I've but when it works, I mean, for, yeah, a lot of times I quite like things that. in the same panel, and you're like, I can't do that. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. When mm -hmm. they know how to do it, it's but, it's know. great um, because yeah. it does take. It does take, you know, one more thing off your plate as far as like you got to now figure out like what this page is actually going to be. It is nice to already right. have that roadmap. And if it works, and sometimes you get into yeah. thumbnailing and it doesn't work and it's super frustrating. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that that's my question to you guys is how many do you guys do a thumbnail and then pencil and ink one page at a time? Or do you because for me, I do all the thumbnails thorough completely before I start anything. So I, I tend to work on like 10 pages at a time at any given time. Um, I would like to be able to do that. I haven't yet. I don't have like the willpower. Um, yeah. Although actually, no, the, the latest sample, a couple of sample pages I've been working on have been like, that's been like four at a time, kind of. Uh-huh. Uh, let me see so I do like a stage, like I do like the, the layouts of four and then I did the pencils of four. Although then I started to get impatient. So I did really did like the pencils of like two. <laughs> and I just was like, okay, I want to do these now. So I started inking them. Uh, I, I prefer if it's a longer pro like this one I'm doing, I'm doing each step like i'm just for this because four pages i'm thumbnailing penciling and then inking um because it's only four pages and, and mm -hmm. it, i don't know i it, it's more fun like I, I like i like just getting to ink something every night um but for other things that are like longer i'll thumbnail and then this one this is for like a pitch that i'm working on like mm -hmm. i do a lot of like little like pen like drawings just trying to figure out like what each panel would look like and then i'll do a rough pencils and then for this one i also then i scan this in and put that into procreate and penciled it a little bit tighter on top and then printed it out and inked it but mm. this is usually how i 
will approach something longer. Um, and even like I try to like think about where's the lettering going to go in it and right in the beginning. So I know, like, I like to have a prototype where I can be like, okay, this reads all right. And then we can know exactly what it's going to look like. Yeah. So that, and then, but I, I'm with you. Like, I like to, if I'm, if it's, you know, 22 page book, I want to thumbnail it all and then pencil it all and then ink it all. And it doesn't always work that way because sometimes I'll get bored in the pencil stages and then just want to ink a page. But yeah. ideally, I think that's the fastest. For yeah, me, typically that's what I'll do as well is, yeah, I like to kind of do each stage to completion. Now, me and Mike were talking about this a little bit last night. This is sort of like atypical for what I do because I thumbnailed just a, f a handful of pages yesterday from the script and penciled one and now I'm just inking it. And part of that was like I wanted to have something to do today. Um, mm -hmm. That was definitely a factor in it because I was like, I don't really want to be penciling on the iPad. I'm a really, I don't want to say I'm slow, but there's so much that goes into penciling a page. I didn't want to sort of be constricted to like, I'm going to sit down on the show and do this whole process because there's so much like I look at a lot of reference and and do a lot yeah. of like research kind of as I'm thumbnailing and penciling um I wanted to do something just a little more fun for the show so I did I definitely jump some steps but I I agree I I like mm -hmm. to at least thumbnail like uh like a sequence you know like do an entire like that part of the story at the very least and then pencil but yeah typically like an entire story i'll, I'll want to do or issue or whatever mm -hmm. yeah for me i like to do um everything in like three to five page bunches depending on how long a sequence is so i'll like thumbnail like a scene or two in one go but then i'll pencil and ink a scene together whether it's three pages four pages whatever and then i'll repeat the process for the next scene. But differently than you guys is the fact that with Ultramax, I have to send it off to a colorist. Right. And so I found that that works really well so that it's kind of like when I send the notes for the page or the for the scene, I can consistently say, oh, these pages I just sent over, um, here are the notes for them. Here's what I was thinking visually, what I was kind of taking from the, the script atmospherically. And I, I will say as someone who has colored other people's stuff for like comics and especially like in a like deadline oriented environment um i you can't you can't send a colorist like 22 pages mm. in one in one go because you know uh, uh, uh there's just never there's not enough time to even to get it done and you know under deadline you know like right, right. It just doesn't it, it doesn't work so you the that's stuff that's certainly something that like the the batches works better if you have a, other people on your team because eventually like if you send 22 pages someone's getting gonna get really shafted and it's either the it's it's usually the colorist because the letterer can at least throw in some placement letters on top mm -hmm. of the inked pages uh, Mike, what sort of lessons have you learned on Ultramax so far? So that is something I was hoping to get into a little bit. Um, it's just the fact that this is my first graphic novel project I've ever worked on. Uh, actually, it's my longest project longer than five pages I've ever worked on. And it's 100 pages. <laughs> so a um, lot of fucking pages. Wow. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it, it was the biggest... Um, jump i've probably ever made in my artistic career in terms of like oh well i've drawn superheroes before let me draw them in a page oh i've drawn a page before let me draw five pages uh and then i went and did a whole graphic novel with doug um <laughs> but by fire yeah exactly yeah um but actually one of the things i was just texting uh you guys about earlier was in reference to the artist jock who is a huge influence on me um oh yeah and in reference to the fact that I was looking through some of his black and white work and I was looking at how often he would uh, ignore backgrounds in favor of leaving it for the coloring stage to add atmosphere. And 
I definitely did that in the first issue of the book, but I regret doing that now. Hmm. So one thing for me is like, uh, in terms of lessons I've learned through doing Ultramax is like recognizing what works for me artistically. So, um, anything that's like a tight crop, like this panel right here, um, I'm not going to do a background for cause the text bubble is going to block out all of this negative space anyway, for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. but you need those establishing shots to keep some semblance of, of one craft and secondly, uh, continuity to track where mm -hmm. people are throughout a scene. Uh, so for me, that's definitely one step that I took away from working on this book. But, uh, aside from stylistically, uh, learning how to schedule and pace yourself on any project is so important and finding out what routine oh, yeah. works best for you. So like with the first issue, I had thumbnailed the whole thing in one sitting, um, and then penciled a couple pages and inked and penciled a couple pages and inked. But by the time I got to the end of the book or that first issue, um, and I was looking at these thumbnails I had done a month prior, I was like, Oh, I don't really see that page that way anymore. So keeping it fresh from scene to scene, like I was saying, and doing like pages in certain chunks, um, I found works really well for me, but that's not going to work well for everybody. And so um, the, the the advice I would say is finding that schedule, kind of like Matt had said, is so crucial in, in really being success, successful as a illustrator, as well as clear communication. I think that's really crucial mm -hmm. in any comics project where you're not the sole creator is... Um, clearly establishing what everybody um, visualizes for a scene or for a character and um, making sure that in execution, you're not deviating from what the plan is. Yeah. And I found that the best like people to work with are, 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 are people that um, where you can actually like it, where the, they don't treat the artist like a hired gun. Um. Mm. You know, they're frequently so. Uh, the the guy who's writing this just uh, so uh, is Dylan Gilbertson. So just that, just because I, I can't, I, I didn't say his name, and I feel like that's wrong. Um, so anyways, <laughs> but but he, you know, we had a lot of talks about like what do we want to do with this short before you know he wrote it and before I started drawing it, and so like, and the same with Doug when I did Leap M with Doug is it's like he had already had an artist on that project and it, that fell through. And so like oh, wow. when I came onto it, we changed, like he had to, we had to change the page count cause it was now going to be a shorter book, which was fine. Um, but you know, we talked through like, you know, Hey, well, I read the script. Like, I think we should cut this and you can streamline and like, we can streamline it down to this. And we, we kind of worked on that together, which was, you know, I thought, you know, ended up being a better, it, it, it makes you like, I, I like to feel more involved, like involved in a project rather than sort of just going in and drawing a script. I would say, unless though you're a genius, like you, it, it helps to have experience with working from somebody else's script so that you have some sense of how you like right now i'm writing my own stuff and i'm making it up as i go along but i'm like okay what what worked for me and what didn't and you know um but also kind of remembering that there's not necessarily any rules but ultimately you have to pay attention to what works and if something's not working then you got to try something different mm. yeah i would definitely say because i'm obviously just starting out drawing any interiors yeah and at the moment i'm this is probably a pretty obvious thing but i'm having uh a lot more of a good time working on already established scripts like downloading sample scripts and stuff and because it's oh. not something i've ever worked on whenever i've tried to like script something for myself at the moment i'm like it's mm. just not <laughs> I don't know what I'm fucking doing. Like I'm trying to learn the huh. drawing interiors aspect of it. At the same time yeah. as I'm trying to write interiors, it, it just becomes, I end up tripping over myself and it becomes a massive pain in the ass just trying to learn anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's definitely tough to start, to start writing for yourself because it's a whole other skill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Also, I, I gotta say, I'm a pretty shit writer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you know what that also Hello. speaks to is um, another great tip is the fact that if you want to be any part of the comic book process, whether it's a penciler, an inker, a writer, a colorist, um, don't expect to go into it and not have a, a catalog of books that you've read previously for for reference. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. It's, and I'm, I know we get this all the time and we talk about it all the time about receiving scripts from people who are like, I have a great pitch for a comic book universe. And they send you over the script and it's like, oh, you've never read a comic book script. You might yeah, have seen yeah, a yeah. superhero movie before. You might have read a comic before, but you've never read a comic book script. And if you want to be a comic book mm. writer, you should probably reference a comic book script in terms of scene direction, uh, panel direction, all the facets that go into a visual medium that's not a you know a, a, a prose novel, for example, where you can just write out all of these descriptive factors and have the 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 reader visualize it for themselves. Like your your illustrator needs to know the structure of the page to some extent. Yeah, yeah. And you're only going to know yes. how that works if you if you read the scripts by the art the writers you like, or for example, like comic pages. You're only really going to get a good sense of how to tell story through these panels if you've visually taken in creatives who do this thing that you want to do, you know? Yeah. Mm. Hold on. So I'll tell you what I'm, I'm in denial about right now is that I'm going to have to type up a full script for anything I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard to convince myself that I can, I can do it without that. And that'll be interesting to see. Why do you want to avoid the, the writing process out of curiosity? Well, I would assume there's got to be some just sheer laziness in there somewhere. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, but actually, there's there's that. But also, um, <clears throat> like, it's not Marvel method, but one thing that one way that I want to start collaborating, if possible, is to do it sort of like when animators do storyboards on a wall and they have to act it out for the group. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's really useful and I would like to try to make a comic that way. Um, if that makes sense. Especially if I'm collaborating. But so like, like for me, so here's some layouts for that Flash Gordon thing I was showing you guys. They're not layouts, they're basically storyboards. And what is different from before is that I'm, I'm storyboarding my stories out now. Mm -hmm. But then I have this chart for the pages and how they all face each other. And then I'm going to sort of like figure out what action goes where and the, figure out that like the page layout itself is going to be kind of the last element of it and um, well i think a lot of I, people like working like that do other people do that I, i'm making I it up so. as i go along so i don't really know I, um i i feel know. like um i've seen other people use a method similar like my goal is to design the book from the top down so like i want to design the end papers and the, the uh -huh. credits and just like really sort of use every element of the animal so to speak um, and not waste anything and so that way <clears throat> you know but it's stuff that if you're working with a writer they're the ones that usually think of oh you can't have a surprise on this page because it's facing this other page and that's all stuff i got to figure out and make sure but it's easier for me to see it than to think it typing it up seems so abstract to me yeah i agree um, with you do you oh good yeah i mean i'm, I'm, not, I'm feeling less crazy then <laughs> now the way that I, i'll show you the way that i work for things that like i'm doing just for myself like i did this uh -huh. um short uh, i guess it's two years ago now but uh -huh. like this was all the script that i wrote it was it was like a 12 page no maybe 18 whatever but this is it it's just sort of like but the, the whole short is dreamlike um hmm. but then these were the the layouts but i just went from you know this is the the writing part which is simply just like these are the beats and then i just went and drew it and however long it went it went and then i 
inked it. Like then I'm doing this other short, which I'll. This is a lot longer one, but which I'll eventually finish. But um, mm-hmm. you know, I I wrote it out in like a sort of a prose mm-hmm. format, um, and then I've been just sort of. I've thumbnailed it a couple of times. Like I've done layouts for it a couple of times because I keep, I keep sort of changing certain elements of it, but huh. um, I kind of like doing like that super iterative for things that it's just for me, like the iterative process isn't that bad. I, I do feel like though, like if you want to make comics, just make comics and then like, but also mm. find find work that you enjoy doing that, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't bet my life on it, you know? You mean, oh, yeah. That's always been, that, that's like, uh, you know, it's like, uh, if you enjoy, if you really want to make them, you will find time to make them no matter what you're, job you have you know yeah Mm. and eventually if you can make it work where financially it can work for you then that's Mm -hmm. great but like you should want to make like i always go through i i used to go through a lot more phases of like whether or not i enjoyed making like comics or not and now i've settled into like yeah no this is really what i enjoy doing with my time and you just you know, you find the time to make the time, but, you know, not worrying about trying to be like, this is going to be a full time, my full time job. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, for me, it's, I, I don't know how great advice this is, but for me, it's um, asking yourself a couple of questions, which is if I have a blank sheet of paper and I can draw anything, what's going to happen? do I know what it is I want to do if somebody gives me the keys to the car? Mm. Because I think that, I think keeping your enthusiasm and your love for why you wanted to do it in the first place is really important. And I've had eras where I've had trouble with like depression. It's like somebody turns a switch off and all of a sudden I, I don't love drawing and I can't remember why I loved it and it sucks. And, um, Mm. I had to, when I was able to switch that, I I could still do it as a job because I had a skill, but like there was no fun in it whatsoever. And so when I was able to switch that switch back on, I'm real protective of it now. And it's one of the reasons why I love drawing all kinds of stuff, but I love superheroes and it keeps my claws sharp by, you know, doing stuff like this with you guys. Um, and every time I draw Batman, I'm like, this is why I love comics. You know, it's still fun mm. to me, even though uh, I love doing all kinds of different things. And so I guess that's probably why I've got like Rankin Bass, Flash Gordon and the Warriors and mm. all this other weird <laughs> shit going on. But then I'm like, Superman, great, let's do it. You know, I can. St- I still love my Marvel movies and everything. And um, I just don't want to feel stuck in one genre. Uh, but you know hanging on to that love because it's it is awesome but it's really hard work and uh you know remembering why you want to do it in the first place for me is really important because it gets you through those tough times of like god why am i doing this again Hmm. for me i i totally agree with everything you just said really yeah i appreciate i appreciate been very supportive matt I, it's, it's, it's totally, I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, it, it, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's both one of the most rewarding things and also like the, like one of those things where it's like, uh, what's the, what, what, it, what am I doing right now? Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you can't, but, um, yeah, but... what's that? Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, I've definitely had those moments where I'm like, why is this the thing I have to do? Why yeah. is this <laughs> of all yeah. things? You know, I've got like filmmaker friends and I'm like, you know, they're not making any money right now either, but I'm like, man, the 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 potential is there. Mm-hmm. And not that the potential's not there in comics. The potential is absolutely there, but I'm like, 
this super fucking hard, exhausting thing. Why is this the thing? <laughs> yeah. You know. But there's a reason, you know. Yeah. Um, I just for me personally, watching any of the Bruce Tim superhero cartoons gets my juices going. Man, I love it. That stuff <laughs> yeah. immediately makes me want to draw. There, there's certain things that make me want to draw, and that's one of them. I just I get so into the stories and getting out, getting out old Jack Kirby art. You know, one of those really good Marvel fanfare issues that Michael Golden drew is like, oh man, this stuff's great. Um, and I think I think you know, finding figuring out where your self esteem is too. Um, we were talking in the chat yesterday, I think, about that because there was a point where I wanted to. I was telling them I wanted to show my work to Andrew Robinson, and he said. He said, great, meet me after the show. And then I chickened out and I didn't mm. do it. And I kind of came home after that from the con and was like, I got to, you got to, you got to not, you got to find your confidence, dude. You can't, you can't be doing that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> That's tough to find though. Time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, think it's, I think everything rests in that. Like for me that, you know, if you go through a breakup and your whole life spirals out of control, like you can't let that stuff happen. You have to con finding your confidence. And I'm not saying it's easy, but if you find it, it'll get you through those tough times. And I think that part of when work looks good is because there's a certain confidence in it. You know, it's, it, it makes work attractive. Mm, for sure. Um, you know, there's people who I think are great artists because they just don't know any better nobody they don't know that they that they can't do this and they do stuff and it looks confident and, and people respond to it you know i i can only imagine there must have been people telling jack kirby he was a terrible artist um because this stuff yeah. got so strange looking but you know yeah. he just like he couldn't not do it it was who he was and thank god you know True. And, I, you know, you said, uh, like, this show is actually very, like, you know, if, for, if nothing else, it's like that that da that weekly reminder of sit down and draw for an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's important to find the, you know, your your group, your mm. friends, the people who understand what you're talking about, you know, like this. Yeah. That's a good, that is a very, that's a good, that's a good point. I was going to say, that's actually a great point to transition into the, uh, the roundabout here. Um, because I do think that is a great point Todd, of like finding that circle and that, uh, community that does what you do or wants to do, does what you want to do, or is interested in the same topic and, um, can help flourish ideas in there and, uh, and keep your passion alive and keep it lit while the tough times darken everything. Uh, mm, yeah yeah it's absolutely crucial and i think that's a really great point to end on for the uh tips and advice for drawing comics here um yeah. what we do here on ink drink think we keep it lit we keep it lit guys <laughs> that's right, right. That's, that was that, that was, was the, that, that was, was the bad. message i was just trying to get across that we keep it lit yeah i knew that that's what you were getting at <laughs> not a sentimental <laughs> we gotta make we gotta make t-shirts ink drink think keep it lit keep, keep it lit, lit. <laughs> <laughs> but guys on that note why don't we jump around nate how is that first page of our top secret now not top secret because we're showing it to the public project going yeah yeah uh really good i think um i am really i'm really digging i'm into the third panel right now um i've got most of the architecture sort of like uh, ruled out like all the all the straight lines that I need. That's the boring work part of it. Now I'm gonna draw some trees and do some rendering on the buildings, and I'm that's the fun part. I'm super excited. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm trying to make it spooky and and dark and ominous, uh, but but also you know fun and thrilling and and cool. So hopefully hopefully we're getting there. The uh, those corn stalks, that first panel looks beautiful. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, the corn was man. The corn was kind of stressing me out. No, it reads. It, was... it reads from. Uh, it reads from here. So, 
good mm, good that, yeah that's, yeah completely that's good this is my first time it's, properly seeing it and it looks great it's it's one of those things you know it was like yeah i know what corn looks like and then i sat down <laughs> to draw it and i was like what the <laughs> fuck does corn look like <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. That's a good last minute piece of advice too. It's like you probably don't remember what the thing you're trying to draw looks like. So you don't. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> well, guys, to jump around to keep the momentum going, Johnny, how yeah. have your faces turned out? <laughs> uh, I figured. Yeah, I what are you drawing over something. there? <laughs> what the hell's going yeah, on? <laughs> I, I felt like I should do something semi interiory, so. This is where I got to so far. But it's mostly just sort of me-ish kind of things. Um, it's going okay. Yeah, I, I drew the face I like... It, so. I, I kind of hate it as well a little bit. I drew the face <laughs> That's like a cool nothing. Thing. Yeah. I, I hate it, like so you're doing it wrong. Shit. Right in the last two minutes. I drew, like, I hashed out this from, like, scratch. And uh, pretty much hate it. But um, and kept like doing it's that. You know, so you like cool, flip it horizontally, and then you're like, oh, uh-huh. "That's all janky as fuck." Oh dear, that doesn't work. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's fun. I just kind of wanted to. I really like drawing those moments. I think I overdo it with them, but I really like drawing those moments of like big panel of a scary thing, and then a little panel of oh shit reaction to the scary thing. And that's I, always I, fun to do for me. <laughs> I feel like the um, the the whole the stuff around that panel in the corner like it it's giving me like that ditko ditko vibe mm. yeah, yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. And we were yeah. talking about ditko and you were you, time, you were right? saying that you were trying you were reading some ditko recently right yeah yeah because i was saying i found that one book that started with a really good ditko story and then the rest of it is just like a book with like writing and not that much pictures and yeah i don't do books without pictures <laughs> um <laughs> I did. I have recently found there's like kind of a version of that, but it was what I was after. But um, it's in color, so I'm going to try and find it in black and white because the first one was in black and white, and I want it in black and white. But I'll sell. But yeah, thank you for saying a stick, Louis. That's kind of what I was going for. That kind of thing. Old school. Yeah, it comes across as such. Thanks, man. I can show you the commission if you want. That's done. You're not? We'll show that again, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, that's pretty much exactly the same as I left yeah, it. But there we go. That off again. There we go. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Damn, I love that. It. Yeah, I might just transition into only drawing cartoons now. Actually, this was fun. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> well, it looks great, should... man. Yeah, you should absolutely Thanks, be proud of this one. Thanks. Yeah. Not those other ones, but this one, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not the other thing else. All recorded done. episode drawing, but for this one, nice try, Johnny. We drew completely <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> but guys, to keep the ball rolling, Teacher Todd, how's Batman coming along? Uh, it's good. It's fun. Uh, let's see. So again, like I um, threw the background in, and. Uh, I'm just kind of making the basic shapes and trying not to run out of layers. Um, the little layer issue is going to get real interesting. Um, so, yeah, not, I mean, these are going to take a little while, but that's okay. They'll be really fun to do when they're done. So. I want to, I, one day I want to see like a full like layered file from you because I feel like you do like, you're almost like collaging the way that you work these things it's kind of crazy yeah. uh yeah it's funny because i yeah um i mean i'm making it up as i go along i don't really know any better in that in that sense i guess um <clears throat> but it's almost like there's little math problems because i i'm like okay that's going to take a bunch of layers so i'm literally going to have to have like five versions of that so like that thor drawing i did I had to like stop and multiply or repeat the drawing and then see what files or what layers I could combine without losing stuff. <laughs> Cause sometimes you have them on a certain setting and you, you, and it screws up when you try to, right. combine them. um, I mean, it's weird. It's real tricky. It's stuff that I'm like, I never thought I would know how to do this kind of stuff. Um, but it's, 
fun. I enjoy it, and it's very intuitive at this point for me. Um, but yeah, like it's, uh, you know, it's so different from traditional penciling, I guess, in that I'm laying in shapes and doing masks over them. And I think I'm trying to figure out how detailed or not detailed. I keep trying to simplify my style so I'm not going all nuts on this stuff but it's really fun to do and i really enjoy it um and yeah plus i it's i've been wanting to do backgrounds of cities for a while because uh i've been really enjoying looking again at the dark knight returns and frank miller's daredevil and mm-hmm. how abstract those cityscapes got i was i just kind of fell in love with a bunch of that stuff all over again and loved how he was really making things up but it was based on a guy that probably you know lived in new york and saw all that stuff and couldn't wait to get home and draw it but it was a an interpretation of it um even the cityscapes in, of gotham city and dark knight returns are really fascinating to me now they're so bizarre looking at times um so i'm having a lot of fun drawing that kind of stuff in there i'd like to do a homage to dark knight returns uh, one of these days soon. Do a that, do a Frank Miller Batman. That would be a lot of fun. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Todd, these pages I, are turning out great so far, man. Like that one funny. panel with the the whole Shit. cityscape background is yeah. mind blowing. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot more city, man. It's uh, a little lordy. There's, <laughs> a whole, there's like a whole city in the background. Um, if you can see it that goes behind it and again it's not Holy just a crap. drawing issue it's a layer issue where i'm like uh okay Good this grief. is gonna be jesus yeah like i was thinking about it and i was like not this is gonna happen but i was like if they called me to draw batman and i was gonna do all of it myself i was like how long would it take me to do a page i think alex ross takes like four days per page and i'm not alex ross so i'm not I can be able to get away with that, but like, <laughs> <laughs> not that they're going to call me to do Batman, but like, I, you know, I, I do have to figure out my pace and my realistically, like I have a, this ghost story book I'm working on right now. Um, my goal is to have it finished by August, which seems super manageable, but at the same time, there's this little voice inside of me that's panicking. Like, dude, you got to like, don't le- waste your lead time I think as you mentioned earlier mm-hmm. uh, I'm like I gotta get on it because God only knows how long this might take you never know and I gotta figure out how to print it and I'll, what I'm gonna do with it afterwards well I think Try that shop around or... between this brain that... trust we can figure out how to help you with that <laughs> yeah 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 right <laughs> thank god for the internet <laughs> well, i was trying to think of a good transition for it and i didn't have one matt yeah. how's your page turning out my friend yeah uh last last panel i'm on the last panel wow uh, i think it's coming out pretty good i mean this is a pretty uh simple page i think um like i was telling i was telling mike this on text yesterday i think it was like as page like you know you jam a bunch of panels in there avoid drawing a bunch of backgrounds and then you can knock it out in, in an hour or two. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm on the first panel, which is where all the backgrounds are. And uh, we'll see how long that takes. Dude, your speed is unparalleled. I, I don't know how you do it. It's, it's alarming. <laughs> I just, I just accept, I accept uh, uh, that um, all mistakes are my own and that, uh, that I'm not going to fix them. <laughs> We, we, I've reached the point once once the ink goes to paper, it's at the point of no return, and uh, mm-hmm. you just got to deal with whatever you know, however it lays down. You just kind of accept it and move on. Well, Matt, your page turned out great, my friend, and uh, thank you. I'm really excited to see this four four page short in uh, finality. It's gonna be really fun to read. Thanks. Thank but, you. But guys, just to uh, end the show here real quick, I'll hop over to mine. Um, Got most of the brushwork done for uh, the bottom three panels here, which is what I mostly stuck to throughout the course of the episode. Um, so 
Yeah, not really much to say. <laughs> Came into the episode with most of the top um, uh, done with the line work and then um, did all the line work and brush work for the bottom three panels. So after we're done recording, yeah, I just got to... brush work is looking dynamic. Oh, mm. thanks, man. Yeah. I think you should yep. use a brush more often, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You think so? Yeah, I think you should. Man, it, well, it's so tempting I, because I, I see how quickly you guys are able to... Salmon span, that it would make sense. That's true. It, it's so difficult for me because I see how, how fluidly and quickly you guys can get through pages, but there's something mm. tactile about the nib on the page that I, yeah. that's what I really love. Like the brushwork is one thing, like it's, it's very loose, but I, I have a very rigid mm. hand and very rigid, static, stiff movement. Um, mm. And yeah, something about the way, like the, the feeling of it just hitting the page and just cutting across the top, like that's what like really drives me. But mm-hmm. I hear you, man. Yeah, like, I get that. I, I see my you guys work with brush work. Is, is do the next next ink drink thing. You got like do start with a brush and do brush the whole time. Oh God! Yeah. Just you gotta <laughs> for, you gotta do it. You gotta just break break the seal on it, man. Guess, and then then go that. with the pen at the end. Man, yeah. that's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that's giving me anxiety and i'm not even drawing anything right now <laughs> do we need to do we need to mail you some new brushes or something or tell us what you need yeah <laughs> so guys that just about wraps up the video thank you so much for tuning into episode 22 of ink drink think everybody special thanks as always goes to our guest host matt pataglia our fifth beetle the man who's on the show more often than sometimes some of us <laughs> <laughs> But Thank guys, you. give some give Matt some love. Go check out the description of this video where you can find the links to Matt's website and Matt's Instagram page, as well as the links to the Instagram pages of myself, Johnny, Nate, and Todd, as well as the official Ink Drink Think Instagram page, where you can check out all the finalized pieces from this episode and every previous Ink Drink Think thus far. And if you're watching in the future, maybe there'll be some future episodes that we haven't even drawn yet as of the time of this recording. So that's kind of cool. Time travel. Anyways, guys, go to the comments below and let us know what are some tips that you have found in drawing sequential comics pages that work well for you. Or ask us some more questions that we didn't really cover on the episode tonight. Anyways, guys, as always, I am your host, Michael Pickard, and I've been joined by my wonderfully talented co-hosts and friends, Johnny Wise, Nate Wells, Todd Blackwood, and special guest Matt Pataglia. We'll catch you guys in episode 23.